I bought this a while ago, and the way it was described, the words used and the sort of appearance, well, I thought it was bigger for a start suggested that it might be for sticking on to, say, a machine tool like a lathe, but it's not. I mean, it could possibly be used for that, but consider some things first. Let's take a look at the quality of construction. There's some little things that make me have doubts about this. So it turned out it arrived and it says LED lighting for apparel industry. It's a sewing machine light, and it is magnetic. It sticks really firmly onto metal objects. I discovered this because my screwdriver went missing. And it turned out it was actually stuck to the underside of the box because of that magnet inside. So, if I bring in the hobby, and I plug this in, and it's got a little switch on it, let's see what the power rating is. You turn it on, and it says 1.5 watts, 51 milliamps, a power factor 0.12, which is what you'd expect. It's most likely a capacitive dropper, or it could be a little switching supply inside. Uh, but the 1.5 watts, going by the usual LEDs, 1 watt equals 10 watts tungsten, then that would be the equivalent of a little 15 watt lamp, and that is very common in sewing machines. They usually have the little 15 watt lamp underneath them. Now, there's something I'm uh, doubtful about in this cable. It's very thin cable, and it says VW-ISC AWM1185, and then it says 30V. Now, is the 30V a code or is it actually 30 volt cable? It could be this is standard uh, sensor type cable for, uh, you know, like positional sensors on things like uh, machine tools. But anyway, let us ignore the fact that it looks like 30 volt cable. We'll see when we actually open it up. And we'll pop this open. I'm guessing from the current. How is this going to open? Is this going to open? Yes, it is. I'm guessing from the current. It's a capacitive dropper. That just is a red and black core. I really think this is 30 volt cable they've used. So here is the little uh, circuit board. It's a very, very basic capacitive dropper. I shall doodle the circuit for that out. What is the value of the capacitor here? And does it have a discharge resistor? It's 680 nano. Does it have a discharge resistor? Yes, it does. I can see. I shall stick my fingers across it anyway. Yes, it definitely does. What about the other end here? This LED panel, it's quite nice LEDs. They're the straw hat LEDs, but they've got very large phosphor areas. Is this going to come out? It just feels like it's loosely clipped in. It is loosely clipped in. And it's got three strings of... One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten LEDs in series. They could have put those all, the whole lot, in series, but that would have been about 90 volts. No, they probably allowed that for uh, making it 110 volts. Right, tell you what, give me one moment. I shall uh, do a doodle of this circuitry. It's going to be a very standard capacitive dropper. I mean, there's two components on this side, the dropper capacitor and the electrolytic, and then there's a bridge rectifier and three resistors on the other side. I shall uh, be back in one moment. One moment, please. Okay, no great surprises. Quite the opposite. It's a very straightforward design. No picture because, well, partly because it's a very small circuit board. There's not really much to it. And also, uh, I've been tidying up the gadget mountain tonight, and it takes a lot of time. It's not left much time for taking stuff to bits. Let's go over the circuit. There is a switch on the neutral. It's a bit naughty, but it's what they've done. And then they've uh, got a live coming in and going via that 680 nanofarad 400 volt capacitor with a 1 mega ohm discharge resistor across it. Just the usual surface mount resistor, which, yeah, I'd rather they had two in series just to actually reduce the voltage across the resistor, but it seems to be really con. It goes to an MB10F bridge rectifier, which uh, I just looked up the spec for that. 1 kV, 0.8 amps. It'd probably get quite hot at 0.8 amps. Then there's a 47 megafarad 63 volt capacitor. They've not done that thing that sometimes they use a low capacitance capacitor with a high voltage so that if it ever goes open circuit, it would stop the capacitor popping. In this case, if under extreme circumstances, all the LEDs somehow went open circuit, the capacitor would see high voltage, but it's kind of unlikely given the way they're being driven. So instead, they've gone for a lower voltage and a higher value of capacitance, which means it's going to smooth it. And with that resistor as well in the series, it just means there's very little flicker. It's, it's just it's a very nice static DC 
flat, ripple-free light, which is kind of what you want for machines. There's a 56k resistor across that, which uh, isn't totally needed. It means that it'll go off decisively. They won't do that thing where they fade away. Uh, the 100 ohm resistor in series, the, resist the LEDs, and then they've got uh, three strings of 10 LEDs. Now measure the voltage and the current, 41 milliamps, 28 volts across them, which kind of fits with 2.8 volts to 3 volts per LED. And the 41 milliamps, what is that? Uh, it's not that high. Let's bring in the kink. The kink? The pink calculator. The kink calculator. Uh, 41 milliamps divided by the three strings is roughly 13.6 milliamps. So they're really not pushing those LEDs hard, particularly because they look like the type with a fairly large cup inside. They've got a lot of phosphor in there. They are nice LEDs. Um, I looked up the cable. And let's uh, zoom out here. Let's get this out the way, this little doodle. And brighten the image up just a tad. I looked up the cable. I get the feeling this might be misprinted. Because it's unusual to see a, a low-rated cable. This stuff I use, it's standard equipment wire. It's rated 1,000 volts. I looked up the numbers on this, and they all came up 300 volts. So is that 3OV just a code? Or is it just because they've missed out a zero when they were printing it? And maybe they've got a good batch cable cheap because it was misprinted. I don't see a problem with this cable for that uh, application, although the fact is Mark 30 volts will probably upset some people. The enclosure in here, one slight thing, the switch sits down into the circuit board, which is loose like that. There's nothing really to short out. It's no great deal. It would have been nice to see a bit of heat shrink on those. It doesn't really matter. The circuit board is quite nicely laid out. It's all fairly generous. The component ratings are fine. Um, the metal gooseneck, it would have been nice. They've just fed the cables through here. They're, they're fairly loose. It doesn't protrude into the electrical cavity in here, nor at this end here, so there's no risk of it touching a connection. However, the so a single insulated wire is going through it. It would have been nice to see a double insulated wire or a bit of sleeve just for double insulation. But again, I don't see that being an issue. You could say that uh, these LEDs are accessible to touch it. Again, it doesn't matter. There's no live connections. Um, and once it's clipped in, it's not likely to just drop out. It could drop out, but uh, it, it feels fairly solid. It took a bit of effort uh, to get that out. So I don't see that dropping out either. So um, the magnet in the back, it's not actually a terribly thick magnet, but it is powerful enough. And they've got a little rubber ring here to actually stop it from uh, damaging surfaces, to keep it, well, to keep it gripped so it doesn't vibrate with the sewing machine going da 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 da, -da and actually this sliding down. Uh, but the back of the magnet says recessed. There's a couple of holes there, but it's recessed enough that, you know, solder connections can't really go in. There's also a little... Uh, raised bit here. I'm not sure what that's for. Have they used a stud in the middle of the magnet? I'm not really sure. It does look there's a little pin in there. Could be wrong. Um, but overall, I would say it's perfectly acceptable. I, I mean, I would class it as a sort of relatively well-designed double insulated light. Everything's rated well enough. It's going to get a very good runtime. The LEDs are not stressed. The power supply is fairly textbook. Worst thing that could happen is if you did get all three strings went open circuit, which is kind of unlikely, uh, the capacitor would see that higher voltage. And then because the current's limited by this dropper capacitor, it wouldn't really do anything too dramatic. It would just gradually get all angry and then just do what the one I tested did and it just gradually slid off its seal with the pressure because it did, the pressure didn't suddenly go up like it was across the mains because it was current limited it just failed in a fairly controlled manner but that's it it's an interesting little light it has its uses uh, even this cover clips on tightly so um, I don't see a huge problem with that what's the switch rated? does it say what the switch is rated? no it does not say what the switch is rated but having said that it, it's probably not really going to it's not really switching much current anyway so i would say it's better than i was expecting it's really not a bad little light for putting into a, a position that you know you just want to stick it on magnetically and just have a little splash of the equivalent of just 1.5 watt led 15 watt tongues and just sort of spreading light in a, a desired direction it's all right
Um, the cable is very flexible. The fact it's printed 30 volts is the only slight downside there. Um, I would say that I would give this like good marks. It seems to have been designed for genuine functionality and it's not a bad construction.